Hey, Helen. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that this is a very busy time. I should tell everybody <laughs> that when when we first talked, you were like, yes, I can take a call at 3 a.m. And I was like, I, I, sorry, he, he was, <laughs> what now? And you're like, no, that wasn't a typo. So thank you. I realize you are working 24-7 at the moment. Um, first of yeah. all, how are you? How is Estonia doing? How are you doing? What's the status of the country right now? I think we're, I think we're actually pretty okay. Um, there's not much panic around what's happening and, and people are pretty much understanding uh, the concept of social distancing. So um, I think, you know, obviously it's not a place where anyone likes to be right now, uh, but uh, it's not the worst. So you guys are socially distancing, you're staying at home, there's kind of any yeah, outside work I, or? I, I think we're actually like more like physically distancing because I don't think I've been ever talking to so many people <laughs> as I've been in the last three weeks. Like, so uh, yeah, what we're doing, we, we're, we're staying home. Uh, it's not right. like fully mandatory. We can go out, but uh, but it's it's a common understanding that rather stay home. Great, great. So talk to us about Hack the Crisis in Estonia. Tell us what happened. Tell us some of the <laughs> extraordinary outcomes that that we've seen already from it. I think one of the one of the most ex extraordinary things um, is uh, yeah, of course, what it, what came out of it, but but. Uh, but what I love about it is how it's a combination of, of government and NGO and, and then a startup working together. So uh, I think like three three weeks ago or so, I lost track of time to be honest. Um, uh, we, I had a phone call from uh, Accelerate Estonia's uh, Mick Weinig, who's a, basically Accelerate Estonia is like a really bleeding edge innovation agency in Estonia uh, for the government. Uh, so he called me and said, "Hey, you wanna you wanna jump in with you to kick off a, a virtual hackathon?" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" But yes. <laughs> so, uh, and then also Garage Forty Eight got on board with with Kai Isant, who's, who's a fantastic person. And and um, so we ended up also joining it. And and Garage Forty Eight is a is a hackathon company. They've been doing it for ten years, but they haven't done it virtually. So their knowledge of how these things um, should be done has been super invaluable for us uh all everyone after what uh, after all of this came out so um we had six hours and we kicked it off uh in six hours we had oh. uh the <laughs> yeah we had the, the ict minister guy margaro was an ex skyper actually one of the original F estonian mafia you know gangs uh we call the startup founders that in estonia um and he was opening the panel uh we had uh over the next 48 hours, we had 1,300 people jumping in, building amazing infrastructural and so forth, you know, solutions that for crisis that we're facing now. So and, can you give uh, me an yeah. example of like what were some of those applications or things that got built? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of my absolute favorite ones is is a very simple thing. It's it's a super simple thing. It's a chatbot. But uh, when, you, when you understand uh, the implications of how much it actually helps people, it, it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, so it's a chatbot about the information about the virus, but it, it will be out to utilize for governmental communication afterwards too. So there's in, like, in about three weeks, there's been 14,000 uh, queries and talks with it. Uh, and that's for Estonia is a lot for a small place, all right? <laughs> so um, also um, what's really cool about it is that it understands slang. Like when, when the kids talk to it, you know, it understands what the, uh, what the, what the kid's asking. And also, it, it, and the main thing that I really, really adore is that it actually leaves the, the hotlines open uh, for the elderly who can't use the chatbot. So it's kind of funneling the conversation so everyone's informed, there's no panic. You know, it's, it's, it's used in every governmental uh, website right now, the media site, so it's really easy to access for people. Um, so another, another thing I, I really want to mention, sorry, <laughs> is, uh, is, uh, is a, is a company now, I think, uh, called Shareforce One. Uh, we all know that uh, employment is a big issue around the world right now because it's all getting locked down. It's all, all changing a lot. So what they did, they built a platform where uh, companies can share uh, workforce with each other. With, so they don't have to uh, let people go. So uh, this is, I, I think this is ingenious. And these things came out, uh, well, there's over 30 different solutions, five of them won. Funny thing though, uh, Sua, but it's, but it's called uh, it's called the chatbot is called Sua. It didn't win. The government liked it. The government reached out to it later on and said, "We need this." Oh, um, awesome. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
So with Shareforce One, so just so I'm understanding, so the idea would be that someone, an employer who suddenly has a ton of employees with kind of nothing mm -hmm. to do because of the shutdowns can kind of advertise them and then, like how does yeah, that actually exactly. work? Who's, who's going to make it, use of this? It, it builds, uh, as much as I understand, it's been really flying fast right now, right? So as much as I understand, it's partnering up companies between themselves. So uh, for example, if you have a hotel uh, that doesn't really uh, have much to people to do right, right now, uh, they right. can partner it up with a delivery company, for example. I see. Yeah. I see. So the people, because people aren't staying at hotels or traveling to them, there's a whole bunch yeah. of workforce there that can be kind of reapplied. Exactly. Yeah. And people don't, right. people they don't lose their jobs, right? And and they went they went as far as actually like building out the whole legislative part of it. It's you know it's there. Use it. <laughs> so that's what's so interesting to me about, especially about the global hack too, is the fact that this is really it's not about just Estonia. You're really thinking kind of globally about this. One of the things that has been heartening about this crisis has been the scientific collaboration and has been scientists really sharing information and just doing a really bang up job of kind of breaking down barriers. That's so much harder when you're talking about policy or you're talking about international affairs. But what are you seeing that actually means that some of this, some of these ideas can be shared globally? Oh, well, that's the thing. Uh, after we did our hackathon in Estonia, we wrote down a playbook. Actually, Garrett's 48 people wrote it down, and we kind of helped along with what we knew. Um, and uh, so after that, it's been three and a half weeks, I think, or something. There's been 40-something countries holding over 52 hackathons, meaning that it's getting really international. But all of these things are regional, as they should be. You know, uh, your communities need solutions. So we figured we need to escalate this to do uh, a next level where, where we get all these people to work together, and we also need all the governments to get work to get to work together with the teams, because what, some of the best hackathons we've seen are the ones where the government is involved, just like ours was. Um, so what we've been doing for the for the global hack is uh, is we've been building a separate Slack where we're onboarding government officials from all over the world. Our, our government is doing it, our civil servants who know other civil servants and so on. It's very informal. And they have been uh, describing the challenges that they have locally that should be solved uh, during uh, the, the global hack that's starting tomorrow. Oh, that's so interesting. So the problems that people are solving are not the ones that they kind of invent for themselves, but this is really coming from need. Oh, it's both. It's both. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's absolutely. What's what's cool is like you're you're not showing up to solve government problems, but you're so you're showing up, getting a full understanding of what is a problem, and then you start building solutions for how for it, however you want. It it can be non-technological, it can be a movement, it can be a social thing, it can be a hotline for like example. I'll give you an example. In Italy, hack, uh, there was a Red Cross uh, uh, employee. A volunteer, I think, sorry, uh, who set up a hotline for elderly people so they could just, you know, talk with each other. Things like that. It's not high tech at all. It's it's human. We're solving this for humans, right? I love that. And so I think speaking to that, that means that you are looking for everyone to get involved. This isn't just about coders or technologists. This is really about no. every yes. everybody can show up and everybody can play a part. Is that right? Absolutely. It's, I think there's a lot of people out there right now who are trying to find a way how to contribute in a, in a time of crisis, how to, how to put their expertise in play. Uh, there can be uh, a lot, for example, researchers, scientists, marketers. There can be uh, people with, with some knowledge about managing teams, for example. Uh, they're all welcome. All of these skill sets are very much welcome. So I know it doesn't go live until when does it go live? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, okay. I, don't, well, I, I honestly don't remember. It's on Thursday. Yeah, I don't remember the exact time. Like, days. it's been crazy. <laughs> Who needs them? Okay, but yeah, give us yeah, a yeah. Deep, what is the, what, is there a challenge that you are, like, you saw come in and you were like, oh my God, that could make such a difference? Yeah, um, we have, we have some uh, missions of United Nations involved. They have set up their missions uh, regarding solidarity. Uh, they really enjoyed. The European Commission is, is, Really looking heavily into um, how to what is what's the new education going to be like? This is mm -hmm. this is interesting, right? 
uh, Estonian government uh, is, is trying to prevent the, the uh, drop of an employment rate in youth. So there's, there's a lot of like pretty broad uh, challenges, but uh, what's going to happen is that when we see different ideas popping up, solving these things from different angles, then there will be people coming to them and trying to help them with the data and access and so forth. I love that. And I saw that there's prize money for this. I think it's uh, 120,000 yeah. 120, oh. euros. For You're the misinformed. Winning. Oh, I am? You're misinformed. Okay. Yeah, it's 140 now. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that it's constantly growing. And, and actually, I found out something just before this that I really want to say. Um, one thing I had not figured out since, since now uh, is like who really started it? And, and I found out, and, I'm, and he has not confirmed it to me, but I just want to shout this out, that I realized that one of our people from the core team who has never said a word about being the author of the idea, Callum, uh, he, I think, was the original guy, was like, we should do a hack. And thankfully, you know, these are the heroes. Uh, he's in the front line fundraising right now. So <laughs> um, that's why I remember they really need to shout him out for it. Good so job, thanks, Callum. Callum. Thanks, Callum. <laughs> so there's prize money, but there's also a bunch of kind of big time investors involved in this. Oh, is, yes. is, is maybe one of the side effects of this actually like employment? Do you see businesses being launched as a result of this? Absolutely. Uh, it's, that's how it's been, uh, you know, these hacks, 48 hour garage hacks have been done for 10 years now. And there's been some crazy awesome companies coming out of it in, in this region. And it's not a one-off thing. Like you kick it off for 48 hours, you, you let it fly, you, you really work yourself to exhaustion basically, building these things with the team. And, and that's just your MVP. That's your first button to push basically. The actual work comes after. So a lot of these uh, big names that are there, like Brad Felt, and, and I'm not sure even if Brad Felt was the one who prompted it, but he was, he's, he's a really cool guy who joined. Um, so we have Ray Hoffman, Sam Altman. We have an astronaut, Samantha Cristofanetti, who, who just sent her greetings in. Um, and Thomas Ermacora, who I absolutely adore. He's, and, and it's, and Chris Schrodinger, and there's so many people who are, who are like heavily into investments and heavily into connecting people to the right people. They've been doing this for us since day one when we kicked these things out. Um, and I see that there's a lot of Silicon Valley, a lot of European uh, VC and, and angel eyes on it. Uh, this is, I think, where the next Googles and Amazons are going to be built. And the key reason is, is all eyes on them. And secondly, access. They will have all the access they need to build their solutions, right? And I think, yeah, that's amazing. How amazing. <laughs> Good luck. I just wanted to close Thanks. and then we'll hand over to Chris and to Corey, but I, you wrote this really beautiful piece on LinkedIn about the motivation for doing this. Um, and maybe this is just because I'm sentimental these days, but I just wanted to quote, we hack because we're all living in one small village in this new world. We're not European, American, African, or Asian. We're human and we will hack because we humans love. Can you just give us like the 30, second motivation that is driving you to do these 24 seven days, nights, weeks, I mean, like giving your life to this, like what's driving you? What keeps you awake apart from coffee? Uh, API is saving lives. It's that simple. We've been talking with Facebook. We've been talking with Zoom, Slack. We've been talking with a lot of people around the world, a lot of big companies. No one cares about their brands right now. Everyone's coming in uh, without any big, you know, salutes or, or fanfare. They're providing, they're helping take care. It's that simple. They love the companies who are gathering, the people who are gathering, the organizations, the leads. They really care. Well, listen, Marco, we are all cheering you on. Good luck. Thanks. Can't wait to see everything that comes out of this. Um, but thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for having me.